Welcome everyone. It's time to do lead code again. And today's problem is problem 139, word break. And this is one of the problems in blind 75 list. So the problem description says we're given a string S and we are also given a dictionary of strings, which is called word dictionary. We have to return true if this string S can be segmented into a space separated sequence of one or more dictionary words. Okay, so simply put, you are given a string and also given a list or dictionary of words. We have to find out if that string can be uh, made of combining the words in the dictionary. And here is one thing that we can use uh, any word from the dictionary multiple times, right? Okay, so for the example, first example says the given string is lead code right? And the dictionary that we are given has two words, lit and code. So obviously you can see that we can uh, make, uh, we can create lit code out of these dictionary words. So basically this, there goes the lit, right? That comes from here and then code that comes from here. Remember that uh, we don't have to maintain the sequence. So even if S was a code lit, still it was a valid thing. So it would have, uh, so you can see code comes from here and lead comes from here. This would have been true, right? Okay. Uh, for the second example, you see we have this word and the word dictionary given is apple, has two words, apple and pen. Now you can see here that we can find an apple here, right? And then we have a pen here and then again, another apple here. So that means this word actually can be built or constructed using the words or this word uh, string can be segmented uh, by the words uh, that are in the dictionary. So that is also true. Okay, so this one also we have to return true. Now for the last one, you can see this one is cats, cats, uh, cats and dog cats and dog, right? Okay, now we see that cats is fine. We have cats, uh, but we don't have like any and. We have and, right? That is fine. We have and, but we don't have OG. So that doesn't work. Let's see uh, if we have cat. Yes, we have cat. And then we have uh, sand. We have sand. Uh, but we don't have OG anywhere, so that doesn't work. Also, we can try say we have dog. Dog is here, and then we have cats. We have cats, but we don't have an this part. We don't have it. So this one actually cannot be constructed using the words in the dictionary. So the output is false. Okay. So how do I? Uh, let's think about the solution for this problem. Okay, so to solve this problem, let's use uh, dynamic programming. And we are particularly using the bottom-up approach. That means iterative approach. Okay, so any dynamic programming qu um, question can be solved either in bottom-up or top-down. But the top-down, we have to uh, that's the recursive solution and we have to use memory cache uh, for the bottom up this is a uh, table like uh, we use tables and if you want to know more about this please watch my lecture on recursion and dynamic programming i have explained uh, both the ways of dynamic programming okay so uh, for that what do we are going to keep is we are going to keep a memory array. Okay, so by the way, there is no space here, right? I am just, uh, there is no space between these words. Okay, and this one is not exactly the example that I showed you. So in the example, it was cats and dogs, but this is cats and dogs, okay? So we have this DP and the indices are here, say zero, one, two, three, four, five, 
five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. So what is what what is the significance of DP eight, right? So the significance of DP eight is it says that starting from index eight, starting from index eight up to the end, right? Up to the end, if this thing it can be represented by the com one or more dictionary words by the combination of one or more dictionary words, then this is going to be true, right? So initially we put everything false. We put everything false. Just to repeat one more time. So DPI means at any index, starting from index I to the end. So is the end index is going to be like, or let's say s dot substring starting from index i and ending at index the end. What is the end? Uh, if I take the Java notation, it's going to be this. If this is, uh, if this can be represented by or built, right? If this can be built with word dictionary, if that is the case, then we return true. So this one will be true, right? This is going to be true. Okay, so let's try to see if we can uh, iteratively fill up or calculate this, uh, this, mem this memory, right? Okay, and calculate this table. So we start, this is our index, we start at the end index, okay? So here is my algorithm. So we start with end index, and then I go over all the words to see if this portion can be represented by any word. Now, once I before I go through all the portions, right? See that my current scope has a length of one right so if the word is word has more length than the my current scope there is no reason i try to see if this portion is going to be represented by any of the words right okay so i'm here and then i know that from here this is index nine right and the last index is also index nine so from nine to nine there is only uh, from index to nine to index to nine, there is only one, the length of the word is one. But here you can see, uh, once we go through this, this has a length of four, this has length of three, this has three, right? So none of them have, all of them are actually larger than one. So what's going on is we won't even try to, uh, try to calculate because we already know that a word of length four or three is not going to, uh, or just let's say this, a a portion or a portion of a string that is that has a length of one cannot be built of a of words that have length larger than one, right? So we don't do anything. Okay, so this one remains false. The next pointer moves here. The pointer moves here. Uh, so you see now we have a length of two, right? Eight to nine. So we have a length of two. But the problem here is still this length of two is smaller than any word here. Any word here is the length is smaller. So it's impossible to represent these two characters with any of the words in the word dictionary, okay? So that means this one also remains false, okay. Next, we move our pointer here. So this time you see that we have from seven to nine, there's a length of three. So we want to try to see if this portion is going, is possibly represented by any of the words or multiple words. So we start trying with cats. Now you see cats has a length of four, but uh, I want to find uh, and make an area for a length of three. So I just rule this out. Then dog, as you can see that 
dog is actually equal to this, right? So if dog is equal to this, immediately what I do is I just make it true. So this is equal. I make it true. And then uh, I just stop here because already I know that this portion is this portion is actually representable by a one of one or several words. Okay. Okay. So here is one thing, uh, just to give you an uh, overview. So if say this is your, whatever, this is your DP. Okay. And then if I say that, let's look for this portion. If this portion is representable by the words in the dictionary. Now there are two ways that it can happen. Either this whole thing is one word in the dictionary. That's possible, very much possible. Or let's say, sorry, let's say only a portion of it is represented. So let's say this portion is represented. In that case, how can I say if this whole portion is represented? This whole portion is represented. How can I say that? Well, I can say that if I can check, so if this portion is represented, my question is, is going to be if this portion was also represented, okay? If both of these are represented, then I can say that yes, this whole thing is represented. So as soon as something matches, I just look for the next portion that is, if that is represented or not. So as you can see, when my pointer was here and I was checking this, now this whole portion was already represented, right? Okay, so I'm I'm just telling this because I'm going to introduce something in the like soon. Okay, let's move to this. Uh, now you see I'm trying to do this, right? Okay, so it doesn't match cats. That's fine. And then it tries to match dog. So I am trying to represent this. So it doesn't match that, this portion, right? So it doesn't match that. So I don't do anything. I try to do sand against this portion. It doesn't match. I try to do sand, which is for the whole portion. It doesn't work. I try to do and with this portion, the first three. It doesn't work. Cat also doesn't match. So. This one remains false. This one remains false, okay? Next, I move here. Now you see I have a length of, starting from index five up to index nine, I have a length of five, right? So I can try any of the words. Now you see that none of the words actually represent any part of it from the beginning, okay? That's fine. So this one remains false. Okay, now I move here. You see that this time I have a length, I am trying to find this whole thing, right? If this whole thing is represented and this has a length of six, starting from index four up to index nine, it has a length of six. Now, uh, I try to find cats here, cats, it doesn't work. Okay, the thing that is going to work is and, right? So and is actually, you can find and this thing here, right? Okay, now how do I decide if, how can I say if this whole thing is represented? Since and is represented, that means this portion is represented. Next, I want to know if this portion is represented, right? This portion is represented. So what I can do is I can just go here and check, right? If that is also true, then I can say, okay, I already found one thing that is represented and also I, for the rest of the part is also represented because I already have calculated this. This is also true. Both of these cases actually come together and now I can say, yes, this whole thing is going to be represented, right? Or this whole thing is going to be calculated, it can be, this whole thing, it can be constructed by using the words in the dictionary, okay? Next, let's move here. 
Okay. So here is the interesting thing. Now you see that I am now trying to see if this whole portion can be constructed. Now you can see we have a word san. This is san, right? So san is matches here. That's fine. Next, before I decide if I want to change this to true or not, I have to decide if this portion is going to be represented. So I just come here and check this. Now you see this is false. So although this was worked, but since this is false, this portion is not represented. So I cannot make this a true, right? Okay, that's fine. Let's try another one. So you see next, if I try sand, now sand is represented. Now I want to know if dog is represented. So I just come here and check. And you see sand is represented and also dog is also represented. You can see it here, right? You can see it here. So that means now I can change this to true, right? I can say that, hey, sand is represented. And I also find found out that dog is also represented. So this whole thing is represented now. And that's why I made it true, okay? Okay, so here is one thing uh, to tell you that if when dog was being represented, right? I also wanted to know that uh, if the next portion to dog is represented because to make the uh, logic, uh, uh, the logic same, I want to know that if the next part is represented, so one, why don't we just put something like this, an extra element in the DP I, and I make it true, right? So I make it true. So let's say, for example, let's say in my dictionary, there was another word, sand dog, for some reason, okay, sand dog. And let's say sand, sand and sand were not in the dictionary, okay? But in, even in that case, I was checking sand dog. This one actually matches. And then I will next check if the next portion that is an empty string that is also represented. And I put it true by default, right? Okay, so that will make sure that these two things actually work together. Okay, so I will keep on moving. I will keep on moving and uh, I will keep on moving and uh, starting from T, I cannot do anything. So this one remains false. Then starting at A, you see, I cannot actually make anything out of A, T, S, something like that. Then I go to cat here. And now you see that I match cats, right? Cats. And now I am I am interested to know if this portion is represented and this portion I can get the answer here, right? That is true. That means this is represented and also this portion is represented. I can see it here. So I can now say that this whole thing is actually this whole thing can be built out of this dictionary, right? Okay, so I make it true. And finally, this is my answer. So this is my answer. This is going to be my answer, right? So I return this. Okay. Okay. So what is the time complexity of this algorithm? So we are actually doing a few things here. Uh, first thing you see here, uh, we have this extra memory, right? So this is space, space of order of n. If you say this is this string has a length of n, right? Okay, this is order of n. Now, another thing is like we are just moving a pointer from the end to the beginning, right? So we're moving a pointer, right? We move this pointer from the end to the beginning. Okay, so that was order of that was n times, right? We move that pointer n times from the end to the beginning. And every time we are doing something, so every time, let's say when we are here, right? 
we checked against each of the words, each of the words. So if there are say M words, say M words, so every one of these N times we check M words to see if any one of them matches, right? Okay. And not only that, what we also did is say when we were here, right? We were, depending on the length of this, we were checking the first four substring. And then next we tried dog, right? So our pointer was here. Next, next we tried to match this portion. Sorry, this portion, right? Okay, next we tried to match this portion, these three. So basically we are doing substring operations in each of them, right? So we are just going to each of them and substring operation actually takes order of this length. And if you say the average length of this word is average length of words is say K. Average length of these words is K. In that case, we were creating substring of size K every time, which is order of K operation. So for each of the words, we are doing a substring operation and then checking if that substring matches with my original word. So it's overall going to be order of N into M into K. So that's the time complexity. Where N is the length of the string, M is the length of the word dictionary and K is the average length of each of the, of all the words, okay? And this is space complexity. So I hope you understood uh, my explanation. Uh, let's go and check the code. The code is pretty simple. Uh, we keep a uh, an array of booleans of size, uh, the length of the string plus one. Uh, you know why I put plus one? I put a, uh, okay, so initially we fill it up with uh, false, as you see. And the last element, which is the extra element, I put it as true, right? Uh, because if my, uh, word matching word reaches the end of the string so that I I still can check the next to make the whole logic consistent. Okay, so I start from the end of the string. I keep on moving to the front. That's order of n work here, right? So that's order of n work here. And then for uh, each of the indices, I go through the whole word dictionary one word one word at a time and see if uh, my current portion from the end of the string up to the index i if that length is uh, small if that length is smaller than the current word length then there is no reason i check because i cannot use this word to make up that portion right so i just continue and stop here and i go back to the next word otherwise if uh, the current portion has a same or equal length or larger length than the current word that I'm checking. I check two things. First, I check if uh, my substring starting from this index up to the length of the word equals the word. That means if the word matches, and even if the word matches, there might be a portion after that, I also need to check if that portion is also matching something. So that one is already calculated in this memory, right? In this uh, memory. So I check if, uh, so starting from index i, I have matched a portion of word length of the current word. And after that, for the next part, and this is going to represent if the next part is also can be built using the words in the dictionary, right? If both of these are true, then I make the DP of index I because that is a current index true. And then I break, I, I don't need to match further because already I know that this whole portion can be made uh, using the words uh, in the dictionary. Okay, so I keep on doing this. And finally, the first element, this one represents if the whole string, whole string is, can be represented or can be broken down into uh, words uh, in 
in the dictionary. Okay, so I return this. Uh, so let's run this and submit it. Okay, so you see this is actually pretty fast and also it's also efficient in the memory. Okay, so thanks everyone for watching. Uh, we'll come back with another video, another explanation next time.